Hey everybody, my name is Mike Montgomery and today I'd like to show you how I built this mid-century modern plywood media console and you're going to be surprised at just how easy this thing is to make on Modern Builds. Today's episode of Modern Builds is sponsored by LG and in this video I'm going to be featuring the new 4K wallpaper thin 55 inch LG E9 OLED TV. Holy cow, that was a mouthful. The LG E9's unique floating design is created by a glass bezel that the TV rests on, creating a modern and minimalist look that gives it the illusion of floating on air without having to be mounted onto the wall. And LG isn't lying when they say that this TV is wallpaper thin. LG's OLED display technology allows for a screen thickness of under a centimeter with incredible 4K HDR resolution. Experience perfect black and infinite contrast to bring out shadow detail and sharpness like never before. And true to life images with richer color. The Dolby Atmos surround system sounds great and takes full advantage of LG's AI capabilities. The E9 uses spatial recognition technology to actually learn about your space and fine tune and adjust for the ultimate home cinema experience. LG's AI technology is also utilized to deliver the perfect image quality too. With support from a light sensor that detects the ambient light in your room, the second generation A9 intelligent processor automatically updates the brightness of your image for uniform brightness and sharp image quality. So to learn more about the new LG E9 OLED TV, make sure and follow the links down in the description. I'd like to give LG one more huge thanks for sponsoring this video and making projects like this possible. And now, let's get this build started. This media console is going to be built completely out of two sheets of three-quarter inch red oak plywood. And just like always, whenever you see me breaking down sheet goods, I used a piece of polystyrene insulation as a cutting mat. This just lifts the plywood off of the floor and allows my circular saw to cut through the material without hitting the concrete underneath, which is important. And after I cut my plywood to width, I got out my Craig ACS project table, which stands for the Adaptive Cutting System. This project table integrates with the same track saw that I use all the time to break down sheet goods and other solid material, but incorporates stops and guides for more repeatable, accurate cuts. It also gets the material off the floor and at a comfortable height. The depth of my media console is 18 inches, which is pretty standard, and here I'm cutting two side pieces and one top piece out of each of those 18 inch wide plywood strips. Then, the leftover 70 inch long piece will be used as either the top or the bottom. So as regular viewers already know, Craig is a longtime sponsor of Modern Builds and they sent this Craig ACS for me to try out and give my feedback on. The first time I used the project table in this whole system was at my buddy Chris Salamone's shop and I built a round coffee table with a gradient pattern of relief cuts. It came out really great and it was the perfect tool for the job, but it left me curious as to how well this system would perform for an all plywood project, so that's why I wanted to try it on this build. Another new thing I wanted to try on this project was using shelf pins instead of permanently fixing all of my shelves in my cabinet. So on each of my side pieces and my internal dividers, I created evenly spaced holes that shelf pins will be able to go into and hold the shelves at different heights. This is going to make it super adjustable and way more versatile. I spaced my holes every two inches and I used masking tape on my drill bit to make sure I didn't drill through the sides. I also used masking tape to help the veneer on the plywood from chipping out any. These brass shelf pins are available from Rockler and they really worked and looked great. Rockler also sells a shelf pin jig if you're interested in that as well. I'll leave links to both down in the description. After that, I grabbed my pocket hole drill bit and I set the stop on it so that I would drill about three quarters through this plywood. I'll be gluing and screwing this cabinet together, but I'm using this drill bit to recess my screws. Of course, you don't need a pocket hole drill bit to do this, but this bit is basically like two in one. If I didn't have this, I would use an eighth inch bit to drill through the plywood and then use a 3 8 inch bit to drill out the recess. Then, once I had my pieces staged up, I could grab my Gorilla wood glue and start putting all of my pieces together. This cabinet was pretty long, so to help hold everything in place, I used these plywood clips from Rockler, which I'll leave linked below also. They're basically like an extra set of hands that allow you to focus on the piece that you're working on, knowing that everything else won't shift on you. I also went ahead and used an eighth inch bit to extend the pilot holes through the tops of my plywood and into the sides. Then I used inch and a quarter screws to attach everything together. 
A common question that I get is whether it's best to nail or screw your cabinets together in conjunction with wood glue. And really, both work great. Really, they're just there to clamp your pieces together while the wood glue dries. From there, the wood glue is going to be strong enough to hold everything together without any mechanical fasteners. In fact, I've built a few cabinets with no fasteners in the past. I like using screws though because I'm able to recess the head and then backfill it with a dowel. This gives a really clean look and looks like proper dowel joinery instead of a quick put together method. And after I used my signature sriracha wood glue bottle to get a little drop of glue in each of those recesses, I could knock in a 3 8 inch oak dowel. The only thing that I would say to pay attention to when you do this is the orientation of the grain of the dowels. Whether you run it vertically or horizontally, it's best if they're all running the same direction. And from there, I used my Japanese pull saw to flush cut the dowels. Now we're gonna jump back in time to where I was breaking down all of my plywood pieces at the start. And this piece that I'm cutting, I'm gonna be using for the doors. I'm gonna be using fully inset doors without a face frame. So instead of setting on top of the cabinet, they're actually gonna be inside of each of the openings. And so after I marked and cut each piece with the Craig ACS, I got my Rockler hinge installation jig and I drilled out a recess using a Forstner bit for the cup of each of the Euro hinges that I'm using. Links to all of the tools, materials, and jigs that I used will be in the description along with the free PDF plan. This hinge installation jig from Rockler is one of my favorites that they make. I used it in the past to do an entire kitchen worth of cabinet doors, and this works just as easily for small furniture projects as well. It only takes a couple of minutes to set up, but allows me to create perfectly vertical holes to the exact right depth for the hinges that I'm using. There's a lot of different types of Euro hinges depending on if the door is inset or if there's a face frame, and Rockler makes these installation jigs for each configuration. So I made sure to pick up the hinge template that works with my specific hinge, and install was a breeze. After that, I used the same Forstner bit and jig from Rockler to create a round door handle in the corner of each door. From there, I could sand my cabinet and prep it for finish, making sure to wear my RZ mask to protect myself from all of the dust. Even though my RZ mask is something that I talk about all the time, I still have people telling me that they just found out that you can use the code MODERNBUILDS at checkout for a discount. And speaking of finish, you know I'm using that simple finish by Maker Brand. Links in the description. Just look at how good oak plywood looks with an oil-based finish. It's incredible. And plywood layers look even better. Once I gave the finish time to dry, I came back with my brass shelf pins and I could put my shelves in place. So one more thanks to Rockler for making this project a lot easier. They're a longtime sponsor and their products are amazing. Make sure and follow the links down in the description. To lay out all of the lines for the base, I'm using a tool called a multi-square, which costs about six bucks from Harbor Freight. This is really the simplest, most tasteful mid-century base that I've come up with, and it only relies on 15 and 45 degree lines. Diagrams for all this will be included in the plans, but really all you have to do is make some angled lines and connect dots. And I thought that since this video was sponsored by Craig and I was using the ACS to break down all of the casework, I could try it on the base as well. Now I know this is a little bit out of the box, but so is the ACS in general. It's such a different way of breaking down and cutting material that I wanted to give this a shot and see how effective it was. Turns out it was great. I was able to use the track saw to cut right up to each intersection, and then I just used my Japanese pull saw to cut the remainder of the material to give myself a really clean corner.
I really liked the look of having visible dowels in the cabinet and so I decided to extend that into the base as well. I cut short stretchers that I used to attach my two leg assemblies together and I used glue and screws just like before. I don't want any visible fasteners coming from the inside of the cabinet, so I'm going to be drilling through the bottom of the base and into the body of the case. So that's why you see me drilling these recesses on the bottom of the base. From there, I could apply a coat of stain, that way everything matched, and then, finally, install the base onto the bottom of the cabinet. There's about a three quarter inch reveal on each side of my base and you can see me using a quick spacer block to make sure that everything stayed consistent. And then once I had the base installed, this project was finished. I tried a lot of new things on this project and I'm really glad that I did because I couldn't be more happy with how it came out. The base looks great and the Craig ACS provided straight, sharp lines that look amazing. The visible dowels are really cool and a great way of making a high-end piece of furniture without a ton of clamps. And the shelf pins, well, I'm just mad that I didn't use those sooner because they're super functional and I love the adjustability. So as always, thanks a ton for watching and I really hope that you guys liked this video and this project. If you plan on building this console for yourself, make sure and follow the link down in the description to my website where you can download free PDF plans that are going to have a materials and supplies list, a cut list, and some simple diagrams to help you put this thing together. I'd also like to give one more huge thanks to LG for sponsoring this video. If you're interested in learning more about the LG E9 OLED TV, links are down in the description. I really couldn't be more impressed. If you're not already, you should be following me on Instagram. That way you can keep up with me between project videos. There, I've got sneak peeks of what's to come, original Instagram content, and my Instagram stories are fire. So make sure and follow. You should see some buttons pop up on the screen. You can watch a couple videos, maybe even subscribe if you're not already. And make sure and hit that notification bell. That way you stay updated every time I post videos. Thanks again, everyone, for watching. Thanks for a million subscribers. You all are amazing. I appreciate it. And we'll see you next time on Modern Builds. Bye, everybody.